I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeUseOf.com, and this is the Bichu B1 3D printer. And I know what you're thinking. It's got pink highlights and RGB light inside the dial, as well as the print head. What are you doing, James, seriously? But wait, do keep watching, because this $250 printer has genuinely blown me away. This is actually one of the most affordable and reliable printers that I've tested in the last decade. Irrespective of the fact that it's only $250, it's actually a really good printer. Now I've been printing pretty much solid for the past week or so, and I've only had one failed print. And in all honesty, that was completely my fault because I rushed through a filament change, wasn't paying attention and managed to get it jammed. In every other aspect, this has been completely reliable with no failed prints yet. But before I get into some of the little quality of life features that I think make the Bichu B1 such a good printer, let's talk about the unboxing and construction. So the Bichu B1 is not exactly a full DIY kit. The base is fully assembled, but you will need to screw on the Z-axis, the gantry, fit the X pulley, uh, and attach the print head, etc. When I first opened the box, I have to admit, I was a little bit daunted. There's tons of little bits and pieces and packets of screws, and I was thinking, oh dear, I really didn't read the small print on this one. I didn't realize that it was a kit at all, but it was surprisingly easy to put everything together, thanks to a very helpful 20-part build guide with pictures, as well as these comprehensively labeled little baggies with screws for every single step, telling you which step it's for, so you really can't go wrong. You also get a full set of tools that you're gonna need, and the construction is even more simplified by the fact that the print head connects to the motherboard through a single USB-C cable. Now, not only does this mean that it's easy to build at the start, it also means that it'll be easy to swap out for, say, another module down the line or to upgrade or replace. So this really was easy to put together, and I say that as someone who has tried to put 3D printer kits together before. They're in the loft because I gave up. Anyway, as you can see, I built this. Ran through the initial manual leveling, and from the very first test print, it was running great. The only thing I will say is that before you do that leveling, and the instructions don't entirely make this clear, but you should home all of the axes, not just the z-axis. Of course, when you're putting it together, uh, the print head is actually going to be in a kind of random place wherever you put it on the line, so it's important to home all of those axes first before you begin the leveling. I didn't realize that because it's not something I've done before. I've never really built a 3D printer, uh, so I did have a bit of trouble there with the leveling. After I'd honed them all, it was working fine. If you've never tried to manually level a 3D printer before, it's remarkably simple. You just put a piece of paper underneath the print head and then you raise or lower the bed using some dials underneath it in each of the five points until they're roughly all the same with a little tiny bit of friction between the paper and the print head, and then you're done. And you probably won't need to do it again unless you move the printer or unless something goes drastically wrong. Okay, so let's talk about some of the features specifically that you're gonna find on the Bichu B1. First off, it is an Ender 3 version two clone. In that respect, it's entirely unremarkable. There's nothing particularly unique that this particular iteration uh, of that design brings to the table. Yes, it does have an RGB light in both the print head uh, and the dial on the interface here, which is great for checking on a print at night uh, if you don't have any lights in your house. The print bed isn't huge by any means, but nor is it particularly small. It's certainly going to be big enough for most people at 235 millimeters squared by 277 millimeters height. It's also a heated bed, again, fairly standard. And the so-called super spring steel plate is removable. So should you need to, you can snap your print off. That said, whatever the surface on this thing is, it's absolutely brilliant. I've had no issues so far with prints warping up at the edge. So obviously the heat is distributed evenly and whatever that surface is really makes them stick well. It also produces a really nice sort of stippled effect on the underside of prints. And although the sheet can be removed and then snapped off, for the print, I've actually not had to do that yet. As soon as the print bed cools down, I've found that the print just naturally snaps straight off. I, I don't know what kind of magic this is, but it's great. Now, if the surface does wear down or if you scratch it too much in some way, it's actually double-sided, so you can flip it over and make use of the other side 
before you need to purchase a replacement. So that's good too. Internally, it's running an SKR 1.4 board along with removable TMC 2088 drivers. And as I said, they're removable. So should you wish to upgrade or need to replace them, that's easy to do as well. In terms of ease of use, first, the 3.5 inch color touchscreen interface itself is really nice. It's really easy to understand. It's responsive to touch and you do have live Z adjustment if you need it, but I can't say I did yet. Yes, it's a manual leveling process. I didn't get the BL Touch upgrade thing and I don't suggest that you do either. The manual leveling is really easy enough. It does use a Bowden tube, which I'm not particularly a fan of, especially this opaque one, which means you can't actually see when the filament is in there or when it's retracting whereabouts it is. But the interface allows you to feed or retract in up to 200 millimeter lengths at a time, so you're not sitting there repeatedly pressing the button as I have been with other models. So although I'm not a fan of Bowden tubes, it hasn't presented a problem for me yet. And they have just released a new direct drive print head, which you can upgrade if you wish. It also features a filament runout sensor, which I did get the chance to test and can confirm that when the filament runs out, it is really easy to deal with. It just moves the print head off to the side, pauses the print and waits for you to retract and then reinsert some new filament, at which point you can just resume the print where you left off. The interface in general is all very user-friendly. I've never used one like this before. I'm not familiar with it, but it felt easy enough to use straight off the bat without having to look anything up in the manual or look for help online. It was all pretty obvious what things do. On the software side, it's compatible with a wide range of packages. You don't need to install some special software package from B2 themselves. I used Cura and it has a profile built in there. You can just download the standard version of Cura, select your printer, and you're all ready to go. Now the highest quality setting is 0.12 millimeters layer height, which is what I printed this glorious unicorn in, and it's come out really nicely. That said, even at the default 0.2 millimeter um, standard print quality, uh, I was also getting great results with good bridging, no errors, no, no slippage in the belts or anything. It's just, it's all working really nicely. The only downside of the B2B1 is the ambient noise level. Not the stepper motors themselves, because those are pretty much silent, but the fan that's built into the base, presumably the power supply, is really noisy. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it on video because I'm wearing a lav mic, but I'll make sure to take a sample of that with something. Now those are on even say at the moment when it's idling, which is a bit of a shame because it's quite annoying and it's the only minor flaw that I can find. Otherwise, I think I found my perfect daily printer. Longer term, of course, I can't comment yet on the reliability of the B2B1, but so far it's been performing well. That said, the fact that I've gone through the process of constructing it, and since the hot end assembly is connected only through a USB cable, albeit a custom one, I'm pretty confident that I would be able to deconstruct and replace the entire hot end assembly, for instance, or do other basic repairs. I also think it means potentially in future you'll be able to upgrade or just replace it with, say, a CNC module or laser engraver. Even though it's only a semi-build kit, you certainly learn a good deal putting one of these things together. It's a great learning experience, apart from just being a really great printer. So the B2B1 is the best affordable bare bones printer that we've seen yet. Yes, it arrives half built, but the instructions are comprehensive and I think you'll be up and running in no time at all. It's super easy to use, very reliable for me so far. Oh, and it also comes in black if you can't stand the thought of a printer with pink highlights on it. So thank you to Bichu for sending over the B1 for review. And if you'd like to win a Bichu B1 for yourself, please head on over to the link in the description or go directly to makeuseof.com slash giveaways where you'll find all our currently running competitions. Just pop your details in there and you'll be in with a chance of winning. Entries close in about a month. If you found this video helpful, then please do hit like uh, and drop me a comment. If you wanna leave any feedback or ask any questions about it, I'll try my best to answer them. And please do consider subscribing for more weekly gadget giveaways, tech reviews, tech news, and more from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Until next time.